For more information on Point Blank's DJ and music production courses in London, Los Angeles and online, head to pointblankmusicschool.com. Hi, my name's Ben Bristow, lead DJ instructor here at Point Blank Music School, and I've been checking out some of the cool features in Record Box DJ. So I'm going to give you a little demonstration of some of those features and then explain what I did. So here we go. So what I was using there was the sample player and also the built-in sequencer that the sample player has now. So if I go up here to the sampler section, what you've got is four different banks where you can load in eight samples per side per bank. So in fact, 16 samples in each bank. And if I click on this bank here, bank two, then there's a whole load of other slots that I can put different samples in. So I was using just one bank but I was using samples on both sides of it and what I did was I actually put in drum samples into this left side here so different drum sounds I mean obviously people could use this for samples like sirens or build up effects on one bank you might want to use the other bank for DJ name samples or kind of idents that kind of thing but you can use it like an actual drum machine like a live sequencer and I basically loaded a kick drum into the first sample slot so I'm using the D DJRX controller here by the way so on the controller itself you could see that I'd selected sampler so that means the eight pads on each side will control the sample slots so the first pad on my left side is a kick drum then the, the next one snare then I had a hi-hat and then a kind of shaker and then what I did on the right side was I just queued up a couple of separate parts of one of my tracks so I had a synth, some different kind of wobbly synths basically, so I could do a little melody as well. Now there's a few things to consider if you're gonna use the sampler in this way. You can get a track and load that same track into each sample slot, so you've got the same track eight times, and you can actually then change the start point of that particular slot so that you could trigger different parts of the track. So each sample slot basically can be edited, So as you see if you hover over a sample slot here I've got the edit option so if I click on edit it brings up this option menu here so you've got the option to trigger the sound so that it only plays when you hold down the pad so if it's on like this this will actually only play when I hold the pad down so as soon as I let go it snaps back to the beginning whereas if I took that off it would play the whole sample it's basically gate mode or this one's play mode so you, generally if you're using it for drumming purposes you probably want it on gate mode so that it only played when you held the key down 
it's also worth checking your preferences because there are some preferences specifically for the sampler here so if you go in and then go to sampler you've got the quantize value as well so you, you that's if you want it to snap to the nearest quarter of a beat or half a beat so i was actually snapping to the nearest quarter of a beat just so that it keeps it all nice and and, and quantized so that beats are kind of in time and not all loose now here you've also got the individual gain for each sample slot and here is where you would change the start point so if I had dropped the same sound or the same tune into each slot then I could actually shift if I press and hold on this look you can see the start point is shifting so you can actually choose where it starts from meaning you could select different parts of a riff or something so that you could have one of your sample slots or banks as different notes of that riff which could be quite cool and then when you want to come out of this you just press the edit button again and that will get you back to the main kind of window here so this right side as I said I just had some kind of synth patterns so that I could just create kind of little patterns and, and stuff over my beat and what I also did was I had a looped hi-hat in one of the actual decks which is useful because it means you've got something to keep time with so I had this hi-hat looping just with a normal loop which meant that when I want to actually record beats over it I've got something to measure the timing with otherwise it's quite hard to judge because there's no kind of metronome which can um, help you keep in time when you're trying to get a looped pattern so what I did once I had the hi-hat running I filtered it with the filter here a little bit just for effect and then I selected record enable here so sequence record if you press that on the controller here I've got the shortcut there's a button for that so it's the overdub button so when you press that button it's kind of primed it's ready to start recording but it won't record until you actually start triggering any, any of the sample slots so once I, I had the hi-hat pattern looping like this I'd made sure quantize was on here so that when I trigger stuff it's going to keep in time and then I just started triggering beats so if I start it will it will record it's basically recording a four bar pattern so you can specify here if you want it to be a shorter section so let's say we're going to do two bars this time so it means after two bars it will loop back on itself see how it's now looping back and it's not me triggering anymore slightly dodgy loop there but that's how it works and then what I did was you can just keep layering stuff over the top of this so if I just stop this you can then once you've got your pattern playing you can then trigger other samples over the top of it and it will record those as well so it's like a multi-layered loop so I'll just show you again if I start my my drum pattern I'm going to press overdub so it's ready now to record new stuff. So now I'm going to start triggering the synth. So you can hear now it's just layering the second lot of samples over the recording I had previously. So you can also save the pattern so if you save that then it it's actually saves it as an audio file so you can you see here I've actually got those as audio files so if I drag, drag that in there that's the actual recording that I just made and I can play that from a deck so it's pretty powerful really you could record a really cool little loop and then actually use it for production purposes because it actually you can save it as an audio file and you've also got multiple patterns you can trigger so here you can click on pattern 2 pattern three you can you can kind of have lots of different patterns stored in memory um, also then once I had my pattern looping I did a bit of scratching over the top of it with one of my spare decks here so I mean it's, it's really quite a powerful tool it's like live music production it's edging into kind of Ableton territory really because you can create completely unique tunes on the fly even then save them off for future use and uh, yeah really cool little feature <laughs> I'm gonna go get some more.